Applause, 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 applause. I like the energy. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? There are a few tips I took from the panelists that helped me become better at what I'm doing. And that's why I entreat you all as young people to watch this, share with your friends, let them know that we're having a very crucial conversation about finding the right job and fitting into that job. Why? Because young people are agile, they're adaptable, they're proactive. And so now if you're looking for a job, well, in the past, they'll say five years experience, 10 years experience. It is important. But on the African continent, we're told that we have a more younger population all across the world. And by 2030, we're going to have the highest youngest population around the world. And so if that's the case, everybody's looking for those young agile people to fit into the world of work because they are young, they are agile, they are proactive, they can adapt to whatever change. And of course, you can teach them. They are very teachable as well. But are they really ready for the world of work? We're preparing you right here. My name is Verla Mundi, and today we're having that conversation. But we also have something very special that we're launching, and we want you to be a part of it Hello? because what Hello? we're launching is a special Hello? product for young people. Before we get into that, let me introduce my special guest today. And today we have some very capable people from APSA who will be telling us why it is so important for them to focus on young people, what young people need to do and to yeah. know before they enter the right. job the market. If you're in school, maybe this conversation is even for you. If you're a graduate, you've been home for a while, you're wondering, what am I doing wrong? We'll write all the wrongs right here. Next to me is my first panelist for today. She's Priscilla Yeboah. She's the head of citizenship at Absa Bank Ghana, and she's in charge of the bank's corporate social responsibility. Very, very passionate about youth development and mentoring young people to transition into the world of work. And I say that because I've seen how she speaks to young people so passionately. She's helped a lot of them, and today she joins us. Hello, Priscilla. How kind of you. How are you doing, Priscilla? You're good? Okay. Oh, you'll be it's fine. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. I know, shake right? Shake it off. You'll be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, I'm very excited to be here, especially because what we are doing here today is something that is special to me as a person. I'm so passionate. Um, Any time the youth is, in, is involved in whatever I'm doing, I'm very passionate about it. And secondly, at APSA Bank, our purpose it's actually empowering Africa's tomorrow together, ah. one story at a time. Okay. And you and I, we can agree that our tomorrow is all about the youth. Yeah. So whatever we do in the youth space is actually in line with our purpose as a business. And that's good. That's just a forward, by the way. So in case you think she started, she hasn't started already. This is just forward. So that means that there's pressure on Prince and Christabel to also give us a forward before we get into the conversation. <laughs> but, but if you look at, you know, uh, Priscilla, how old she, she's young, right? She fits into the youth category. Right now, everybody's youth, though. Are you realizing? <laughs> we are refusing to grow. So if you guys don't look sharp, we'll take all the jobs and leave you out of it. <laughs> but anyway, also joining us this morning is Prince Tete Nate. He's the acting head of talent acquisition and a people business partner at APSA Bank Ghana. He's a certified senior professional in HR who is passionate about supporting young people and adding value to themselves. Please put your hands together for him. He's here to add value to your life. Hi. How are you doing? My first time meeting you, and I already like you based on your profile. Really? Yes, so I know you're going to do a lot, not just for me, not just for those who are here, but everyone who's watching sure, as well. Sure. I'll, Give I'll, us a I'll, brief... I'll Brief intro, forward. Oh, Priscilla has done it all, but anyway. So, um, Dennis, I'll, so I'll follow you on the audience. I want to emphasize uh, the need for the youth to add value to, to themselves, especially in the corporate environment. I mean, you screen CVs every day and you see different kind of things in there, and we are hopeful that they put the right kind of skills that are needed for the current markets and the current dispensation that we are in. Yes. And I'm looking forward to the conversation today. Also joining us is Christabel Vogbe. She's a youth segment manager at APSA Bank Ghana. She's responsible for developing a proposition that will attract and retain a youthful customer base for the bank. And she's passionate about youth financial inclusion programs and other youth-related initiatives. Christabel, please put your hands together for her. <laughs> Hello. Hello, president of the youth. How are you doing? 
How are you doing? I'm good, thank you very much. I know you're not nervous. You're actually ready for this conversation. <laughs> yes. What would you say to Ginger the crowd before we start our conversation? So a lot of times when we talk about the youth, um, there is an aspect of it that we don't usually focus on, which is financial inclusion for the youth. And so today I'm really looking forward to the discussion for us to tell the youth about some of the amazing Dennis, things Dennis, that man, as man, man, we are man, doing Dennis to promote man, financial man. inclusion for the youth. So definitely looking forward to the discussion. So no more susu box. Now open Dennis, your account Dennis. with APSA and okay. keep your money there. And they'll take very good yeah. care of you. There are investment options, all of that. So we'll come to that conversation. But now let's start proper. And I hope you're watching online. Share the link. Let everybody know that this is the APSA Ready to Work conversation. It's a very special edition. So yes, We'll talk about what APSA has to offer to the young people, what exactly you require to be able to be ready for the work market, but we have a special launch for you, and it's all about you. But Priscilla, let me start off with you. Of course, you talked about APSA and how it's so focused on young people, but how have you demonstrated this interest in the youth, both internally and externally? So I'll say that over the years, APSA Bank has demonstrated our commitment in supporting the youth youth development in Ghana in two major ways. The first one, I'll say, is our education and skills development initiatives that usually help us to reach out to these young ones, to prepare them to transition from academia into the world of work. The second major way that we do that is through our special and unique products and services that we normally develop to support these young ones to solution them financially as well as support them live the, live the youthful lifestyle that they ought to live. All right, that, that sounds great. But Christopher, then I'll let you come in to give us some specific examples. She's given us the two areas, but if you can break it down for us to know exactly what has been done in this field. So um, externally, I'll give you an example. We have um, a partnership with MEST Africa, and MEST Africa has a reputation for itself when it comes to youth training in technology, among other things. Last year, we had a hackathon with MEST where we give opportunity to young individuals to come and share with us solutions that could help us serve our customers better. And at the end of it, there was a reward that came with us. Just two months ago, we also had a training with them on blockchain technology um, as well. And in a couple of- Now put your hands together. <laughs> and maybe you feel like you're not benefiting immediately, but just by being here, we're impacting your life some way, somehow. And so I appreciate them. You have more? If, okay. If, Bella, if I, okay. I just want to add to okay. what Christabel said. So like we are here today, we know about the Ready to Work program, yes. which is one of our major initiatives under the Education and yes. Skills Development. We also have a partnership with IPMC, where we have trained over 10 of their tutors, their teachers. To, so basically every student that goes through IPMC is trained and certified in cloud computing. They've, we've actually supported them to embed it into their curriculum. So what they do is every student that goes through IPMC is taken through the uh, Amazon Web Services okay. cloud computing training. And at the end of the year, we select the best 100 students and we pay for their certification hmm. in cloud computing. Best is, 100 students? Yes, and then we pay for their certification wow. in cloud computing. Have you selected and, already for this year? Yes, we have. We so I, I cannot apply? With the school. Oh, <laughs> so I need to go back to school. It's a first session with IPMC. So, so I need to go to, to IPMC. IPMC. How many of yes. us are going back to IPMC? Anybody here? Oh, a lot of us. We might as well collect our scholarship here before we go. But Prince, you've been quiet on this, and I just want you to touch on why it is so important to prepare for the job market. I mean, for us, when we're in school, we're thinking of how we can pass our exams, graduate, and then take our time and find a job. But it's as if there are institutions that even come to campus and start recruiting. And so you need to have some soft skills in order to get a job or land a job before you go. Otherwise, you end up being one of the graduates who's going to stay home for another year, two years without a job. Why is it so important for me to be ready for the job market? And when is the right time to start working on this? Bella, you know, um, just as the name goes, job market, um, every market has the point where there's trade ongoing, right? There are sellers in there and there are buyers in there. The buyers want something with value and the sellers also want to value, exchange value 
um, for their product. So just like the labor market, uh, employers are out there looking for employees. Yeah. The employees are also looking for jobs. And there should be something that should make you uh, stand out uh, amongst your colleagues. Uh, if, if you look at the labor market we have here in Ghana, jobs or new opportunities are not being created as quick or as much as students are graduating from school. So there's a gap in there that needs to be filled. Uh, last night, I was looking at the World Economic uh, Forum statistics um, on employment and the future of jobs. Yeah. Uh, they release that almost every two years. May this year, they released another session. And I just want to pick some two skills or more of which they mentioned in their report. Uh, they were looking at top skills for 2023. Okay. We have analytical thinking in there, creative thinking, resilience, flexibility, and agility. And this is coming from what COVID has taught us. Sorry, what? No, touch on them again. Yes. Analytical thinking. Okay. Creative thinking. Resilience, flexibility, and agility. Oh, wow. Motivation and self-awareness. Technological literacy. So if you're a young person, and as of now, you still have on your CV as your skills, attention to details. <laughs> We've passed by that long, long time ago. And this is for 2023. And mm. you asked, when do you need to prepare? The time for you to prepare is now. Because whatever skill you are looking at in the next five years that you want to be there, you want to be on there, the preparation starts now. Some few years ago, we were all heading towards one industry, oil and gas, oil and gas, oil and gas. Today, what do we say? AI, big data. So if five years ago you started, they said oil and gas, and you started a degree in oil and gas, you started yeah. studying oil and gas, by the time you are done with your degree, yeah. it's something else. Yeah. So you are losing time. So you actually need to look at the trend of the market and look ahead of it yeah. and run towards it. Okay. That is what we're actually supposed to be doing. So if I copy my older sister's CV and she's written, ready to work under pressure, and I also go and write that, <laughs> it means that... No, 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 no. We, we are long gone. We are long gone on that level. We oh, but a lot of gone. us copied it all. How many of you have ready to work under pressure? And then you actually find a job, they're giving you pressure, and you're like, no, yeah, no, no, I didn't yeah, sign up yeah, for yeah, this yeah. one. Yeah. So you need to, what, make sure that you're flexible, you're yes. HR, and you have that naturally because you're young. Yes. Wow. Yes. And you can only get these information by research. You need to read about them. This is free information out there that is being put out by an organization that is spending millions to, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So for top 10 skills on the rise, they are looking at between now and 2027. And per their report, uh, they make us understand that by 2027, which is just about four years away, 25% of jobs will be disrupted. And 44% of skills will be disrupted. So whatever skills we have now, we, need, we also need to move very fast. Technology is moving very fast, but organizations are also trying to invest in their employees and train them in those areas. But then the investment and the training is not coming as quick as the technology is, is coming through. Yeah. So there's the need for you to also take that personal development as a personal initiative or as a personal responsibility uh, to make yourself known out there. So let me just read over the top 10 okay. skills on the rise. Critical thinking is still in there again. And you can get this. Just go on Google, type World Economic Forum, Future of Jobs 2023. Analytical thinking is there. Technological literacy. So stop writing, um, I'm good in Microsoft Excel, and this is what you're supposed to put on there. And you, you should also be able to prove this when you go for interview, mm, right? Yeah. So curiosity and lifelong learning, resilience, flexibility, systems thinking, AI and big data, service orientation and customer service. Mm. Yes. You mentioned curiosity. Mm. We, we are in a setting where when you ask too many questions, they say you are too known. Mm. But we're saying we should have that skill yes. as well, curiosity. Yes. yes. I like that you mentioned that. Is the older generation ready to also accept some of these new skills that the world is looking at? Because I would write all those things. I would go there and want to know everything and want to help with everything. And they say you're trying to, you know, um, be friendly with the boss so you can get some perks here and there, you know, and all that. So is the older generation ready for, for this as well? Bella, I agree with you, but I've come to realize that the more curious you are, the quicker you rise. So... All those feedbacks come, right? Yeah. All those feedbacks come. Uh, you are being too curious. You are applying for too many roles. Uh, you are entering certain offices. But I've come to realize that those people actually get what they want at the end of the day. So the more curious you are, the quicker you rise. Take note of that. And ask all the questions when you go to work. But let's talk about ready to work now. Mm -hmm. As much as we're saying that, yes, we need all these skills, we're talking about apps are ready to work. Does it offer some programs um, that will help us to also develop our skills and make ourselves ready for the job market or for whatever career we choose? And what have been some of the success stories for some of these things? Okay, okay. So I'll say that, yes, ready to work 
has been launched for about six years now, and we've been running this for some time now. But each time, we keep upgrading the program. As we speak now, it's been developed into an app. An app that is, you can get on iOS, on Huawei Shop, or, or Play Store. These three devices. So it's, it's soft skills training at your fingertips. And as part of the app, instead of just the models on the portal that we used to run, on the app now, it's a whole community of like-minded people. We have CV templates on the app. We have uh, job listings on the app. We have areas that you could, people that you could have your conversations. You can request for mentorship and coaching on the app. All these ones have been developed on the app. In addition to that, Chris just spoke about critical thinking. We've added a new model, computational thinking and blockchain as additional models because, like he mentioned, these are areas that are very critical skills that the youth requires for the future. So each time we try to upgrade the, the, the ready-to-work program to meet the demands of the future workplace. Okay. We have skills uh, training such as emotional intelligence, communication skills, how to fit into the job and how to attend this, that interview and come out feeling very confident that you were able to meet the expectation of the hiring manager. That is exactly what the uh, Ready to Work program does. And that's what we've been using to engage the youth. We've, 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 this year so far, we've reached over 5,000 students physically with the program. And as we are sitting here today, we've been running this webinar for some time now, yeah. since 2020 actually. We've, dealt with different topics, areas that we think are very essential, not that we think, that based on discussions and engagement with the youth, we've realized that those are the areas that they want us to discuss. So we've been doing this for some time and we've reached as many students as we can. We've been to various campuses to engage these students. And please, if we haven't come to your campus, you can just reach out to us and we are ready to come and engage you with our Ready to Work program. Okay, but tell us a bit about how to engage. So if I'm a young person and I log on to the portal now, what exactly should I look out for it so I don't get confused with all the, the exciting content on there? Okay, so like I said, now the Ready to Work program is an app. So once you download the app, you need to register first. After registration, you receive a welcome email after the welcome email, yours is just to log on and you have access to all the content, all the module. We have six different models. We have work skills model, people skills model, entrepreneurship model, because we, it's not just for the corporate guys. There are people who don't want to go corporate. They want to employ themselves and employ other people. We have content there that they can use to guide themselves to become entrepreneurs or start their own businesses. We also have computational thinking, which helps you build your critical thinking, analytical thinking skills as well. So all this content, after going through these models, all these content are on the app. After going through all this, there's an assessment that you take. You take an assessment, yes. It's a whole training program that the bank has invested in. So you are assessed. Once you pass the assessment, you are issued with certificates that shows that you've gone through this program and you've acquired the, the specific skills as well. I see. That's interesting. Christabel, so let's talk more about partnerships then. And earlier, um, you know, Priscilla mentioned that IPMC is one of the institutions that APSA has partnered and over 100 um, students are getting yeah. the opportunity to study for free and develop their skills. But beyond just that, what are some of these partnerships that APSA has jumped into with some of these institutions? Um, so aside from the MEST Africa partnership that we have, like running all the hackathons um, and what's not, so there is another partnership that we um, had with the Young Investors Network and it's still ongoing. So 
Young Investors Network also goes into various schools, also driving financial inclusion. And what we have done with them is we also want to drive financial inclusion, right? And as and when they go to the various universities, the various secondary schools, because we want to drive financial literacy from a very young age, we've also partnered with them going to those universities, going to those schools and to drive the financial uh, literacy and financial inclusion agenda. We've done a couple on the University of Ghana campus. Presla also uh, plays an instrumental role in that as well. And a few secondary schools um, as well. So for us at APSA, our financial inclusion and financial literacy is not sitting in the back and just curating products for young individuals. We run focus group discussions and we want to hear from the youth that if you want a product that suits your lifestyle, what should it look like? And they give us a lot of feedback. We interact with them. So our products for the youth are actually tailor-made to solution them. We know that students want everything to be free. You know, way back as a student, even the shuttle that I'm boarding, I wish someone could, you know, pay for it. If I'm going to shop at maybe um, one outlet or the other, of course, I want a discount with it, right? Because as a student, you don't have too much money, but you want to live a certain lifestyle. So we listen to all of um, the pieces of feedback that we get from them, and we take it into curating the products that we have as APSA to suit their lifestyle. So not necessarily to encourage them to, do, to get free stuff all the time, but yes. look for ways to better manage your finances. Yes. And then when you find a job eventually, that also helps you prepare for, exactly. for that Exactly. And, well. and you know, another thing that we do is we also want to encourage you to save. And yeah. so whatever balances you have on your account as a student, um, saving with APSA, we give you an interest on it. Just like you wanted to come in briefly before yes, I go to I print. I spoke about okay. entrepreneurship. So at a business, talking about partnerships, then this came up. We partnered with MasterCard Foundation. I'm sure you are aware yes. of that. Uh -huh. And this program actually has supported a lot of young people. We've, we've, uh, with this uh, MasterCard Foundation partnership, we've actually helped the youth create over 11,000 jobs just to help them, everyone that comes out of school to get jobs. And then we've supported startup businesses. We even have I think it's just one in Ghana, a startup account for these businesses, businesses that ju uh, just been created, zero to three years businesses. Mm -hmm. And we try to mentor them, to coach them, to train them, give them business development training until they grow and then we move them into the SME space. But with the MasterCard Foundation, we also give 10 entrepreneurs, young startup businesses, a grant to the tune of two million Ghana cities. If I say a grant, that's funds that yes. we will just seed money that we put into their businesses. Ten, this year, 10 businesses, 10 young startups got support from this partnership with MasterCard Foundation yeah. to get seed money into their businesses. Two million? Yes, please. Ha! Huh. Yeah. You see, at every point, I realize, okay, should I go back to school? Should I start a business? Because I need to find a way to tap into all of this. But Prince, coming back to you, so of course we're talking about all the fantastic ideas that APSA has, but sustainability is a very important part of the conversation because it's great to start all these things. And they tell us that even in Africa, the number of people who start businesses and the number of people who are able to sustain the business, there's such a vast difference. So how are we focusing on making sure that this is sustainable beyond just a short time period? Okay. Um, so in, in APSA, we have we try as much as possible to future-proof the organization, right? And the best way to future-proof your organization is to make sure that your employees have the necessary skills for the future. So every year, um, based on some of these skills I've mentioned, we have trainings that go out to our employees to ensure that they are right for the future, right? And w there are several other programs uh, that we run also to h help us with this sustainability agenda. Uh, one being, um, we had discussions with some universities here in Ghana uh, to create a specialized internship program. And as we speak, this year we piloted it about three months ago and it's going really well. So we spoke to the various career offices and told them that this is what we want to do. So we want to move the internships from 
the usual people coming in, as they do in other organizations, they send them to buy food and all this kind of stuff. No, not in APSA. So, oh, it doesn't happen in APSA? No, 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 no. You don't send no, 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 no. interns, national no, service personnel? No, 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 no. We don't do that here. To go and buy wache? No, 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 no. Okay. It's not part I of thought you would clap your hands because of, of that. <laughs> Is that not what we have been fighting for? <laughs> exactly. Okay, yes. carry so, on. So, um, the agenda is to build a sort of pipeline of individuals or young individuals who we can groom them gradually from through internships uh, gradually they come back maybe through national service uh, they get back onto entry roles through our system or maybe through our graduate training program which is one of the best we have uh, world class graduate training programs yeah. of which I'm a beneficiary of it uh, same as Christa Bell ah. as well so you could see over a short period of time or over a few number of years, there's a lot of training, there's a lot of investment in you to bring you to a certain level. And also, that's a, a strategy for sustainability, right? You pick them young, right? So yeah. we have gone as far as the internships, the level 200, the level 300, the level 400, the national service opportunities and, and all that, yes. I like that. Yeah. But, okay, so yes, we're sustaining it, but how do we encourage stakeholders to also contribute to this sustainability and ensuring that we continue to drive the agenda to include more young people in all the fantastic areas that APSA is looking at. Christopher, maybe I can come to you for that. So again, it's through partnerships, yeah. like we've already mentioned, and um, some of the partnerships we have is evidence of its rights, like the Mastercard Foundation partnerships that we have, the Mess Africa partnerships that we have as well. Those are like evidence of it, because if we want to bring people along the journey, which best way can we do that if we like then ride the journey alongside with you? So some of these partnerships and more of them um, are some of the ways that we are looking at, you know, carrying other stakeholders across and also through our corporate social responsibility by giving back to society so that the general society can share in the agenda that, you know what, we need to go somewhere with the youth. We need to go somewhere in developing the youth and driving initiatives for the youth. So definitely through partnerships, through giving back to society, those are some of the ways that we can carry everyone along. And through the likes of yourself, helping us to promote the agenda as well. Thank you. Thank you very much for those accolades. Priscilla, you want to contribute to this, especially because she touched on CSR, which is... Okay. Also something so, that falls within you your know, domain. You know, when you talk about stakeholders, what came up to me is our major stakeholders yes. are the youth. Yes. Uh, these young ones that we want to impact with our corporate social responsibility. So we have some very good plans for, for the youth this last quarter of 2023 and the coming years. We are actually planning a youth forum. Yes. Oh, that's a great. National Youth Forum. Okay. Yes, that will be held next month. Okay. 27th and 28th of November. But uh, this forum came as a result of feedback from our stakeholders, who are the youth. So we've been doing this one, like I said, for some time, the trainings for some time. And then we, at a point, the feedback came that we should take this to a larger scale yes. so that it's like everybody can have access to what the good work that we are doing in the youth space. So we are planning a youth forum where we will ha bring on board all the stakeholders in the youth ecosystem. We will harness lessons. We will have difficult conversations. We will pick up the issues in the youth space. We will try to create solutions with them, with the youth who are our stakeholders and our major beneficiaries. We will try to create these solutions then we can share with the larger corporate institutions and our main stakeholder, the government, who will also be partner to this, and embed it in our policies and strategies going forward yeah. so we can make the right choices and the right policies and decisions for our youth in Ghana. I'm looking so that's forward also to coming up soon. I'm looking forward to the youth forum. Are you going to be there? Yeah. Oh, you will? I'm going to be there, and I'm sure they're all going to be there as well. So get ready. She says we're going to have very difficult conversations, and you can ask those difficult questions. I would want you to ask some of those difficult questions today. So think of a few, and when it's time for the question and answer, we'll get to that. We're almost done with this first half of the conversation. I just need some advice. So for all the young people who are here, those who are watching, those who will watch eventually, what would be your ultimate advice to them moving forward? Priscilla, I'll start with you. Okay. So... What I'll leave with my audience today is that it's a quote, a quote actually, from Bruce Lee. Absorb what is useful. Discard what is not. And get 
add on your unique panache, your unique style to your life. What I said is absorb what is useful, discard what is not, and add your own flavor to your life. To sum it up from our conversation, absorb the Ready to Work program and all the training opportunities that are there online everywhere. Get rid of wasteful and unuseful lifestyles and then get an APSA Ignition account. Woohoo! Yeah, she summed it up nicely for us. What about you, Prince? Do you also have a Bruce Lee coat? Oh. <laughs> I would have gone the Jack Chan way, but... Oh, you um, would have it. Okay. Yes. Um, so, Chrysler has touched on a very good point. Uh, there are so many distractions around, uh, but there's a model called the uh, um, 70 20 10 uh, model, or 70 20 10 rule. Um, it, it seeks to explain that 10% of your learning actually happens in the formal way. So, you are done with your four years degree, but actu that's actually only 10% of the knowledge you need to move on. The 20% comes from your interactions, from mentorships, uh, people who are guiding you, coaches and all that. Guess where the 70 comes from? Work experience. That's why you ne really need to take advantage of internships, free jobs, paid jobs, while you study. And to mention, we have a, a special program in APSA called the Work and Study Program, where we give students who are in school the opportunity to still work and still study, just to give them that experiential knowledge. So looking at the 70, 30, 70 20, 10, model, uh, you can just guess where you are now, whether you are only hanging on your degree to get you that dream job, or you are hanging on the relationships, or you are hanging on experience you've gathered so far. Yeah, thank you. So in a nutshell, while you are in school, you should also try to get, you know, a place to work in yes. 10, so yes. you can learn on the job market and yes. gather that experience. Bella, one of, the, one of the down moments I've had this year was to have CV, two CVs I was looking at mm -hmm. and someone I was a bit related to and close to and it was a similar role and the person that I'm related to has zero internship. They are both out of school fresh. Uh -huh. Zero internship, like knowledge, nothing. Nothing in that space. As an HR, you will not pick such oh, a person. Oh God. I mean, I'm, I'm supposed to be principal. I'm a okay. professional, right? So yeah. now I have, you have your relation and someone who has actually, who is curious. Yes. Right? Someone who is adaptable, who is flexible. Who's showing all those signs? What do you do? Hmm. Mm. Lucky me then, because <laughs> I didn't do any internship when I was in school. Imagine <laughs> if I was now looking for a job now. Oh. But you have to do that. You yes, have to do the vacation to. jobs, yeah. internships. Yeah. And, all. and you can start as early as what, level 100? Yes, as early as possible. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Christabel? So for me, to circle back to the theme for today, preparing for the job market, every day is an opportunity for you to prepare for the job that you want to after school. So you take your courses seriously, but there are other aspects of, of your CV that you need to also look at. Look out for leadership opportunities, like your JCR um, rules that will come up, SRC, your school parliament. Those things give you exposure beyond the hardcore courses that you pick up from school. Every day is an opportunity for you to prepare for the job that you want after school. And always remember, as many, as, uh, as many students that you have in school, all of you are going to complete. What will make you stand out from the person who is sitting by you? Always have that at the back of your mind. And another thing that I also want to add on is that, you know, as students, we always don't have too much money. But it's important for you to also save, right? To build that habit of putting some money away, irrespective of how much it is. It could be five CDs, it could be 20 CDs, it could be 100 CDs. Just learn the habit of putting money away. So that when you complete school and you are going for your interview, you have a little bit of money that you can prepare yourself and look the part. Because when you enter into your interview room, you will equally be assessed based on how you are also looking. So let's learn to put money aside. But every day is an opportunity to prepare for the job that you want after school. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to try and sum this all up. So if you listen to Christabel, she says that while you're in school, you can join some of these unions, um, school associations. That also helps you build upon yourself beyond just the hardcore um, learning that you do in the classroom. Then there's the 70 20 10 phenomenon where for the 70, you should try and do some internship here and there 
while you are in school to build on your experience. That could go a long way to help you get that job that you've been dreaming of. Don't go with zero experience after school. And finally, to Auntie Bruce Lee this morning, she says that um, in Bible, take in what is important, discard the rest, and use your unique self to fix the rest, right? Yes. I think I've tried. You have. Will I get a job? Yes. If I, if I was supposed to summarize what you said, I'm getting a job. Yes. MD for APSA. Oh. Anyway, please put your hands together for them. I think this has been very interesting, but I want to make it more interactive, and that's why you are here. I'm going to throw the microphone to anyone who's ready to ask a question or make a contribution. Who's going to be my first? Remember I told you prepare your questions. Ask the very difficult ones. They are here. They are professionals. They know how to help you out. So anybody, first person, if you don't come forward, I will choose you myself. Which one do you prefer? I should choose? Okay, there's a lady in the front. If we can pass on the microphone to her. No, the second row, sorry. Yes. Just mention your name quickly and then... Celestine, I can barely hear you, so please get it closer. And if you can stand, yes. It's 70, 70, 40, 70, 20, 10. Okay, I think I'm hanging on the 10. And then I have not done the 70, not because I didn't want to do it. It has been quite difficult because you apply, they'll say, go and sit down, I'll call you, and then it never comes. And I'm in my final year. And here you are saying the job market is asking for that 70 aspect. And I'm almost done with school. How do I find my way around the 70 day? Please, do you get my question? Yes. All right, so can I yes, go ahead? Please go ahead. All right, so uh, in your case, you're almost done with school, and you've never had the opportunity to do an internship. Uh, but it doesn't end there. So. Probably you're getting the idea I'm putting across that it must certainly happen within your time frame in school. But when you are done, there's currently um, a partnership that's going to happen. It's going to go live very soon. I'm sure you saw the advert um, for MasterCard uh, advertising a learnership, a one full year learnership uh, with APSA. Those are one of the opportunities. So you are done with school. Uh, you have not gotten a job yet. Such an opportunity, you apply for it. You get to work for one full year with an, an organization like APSA. And with that, you are gaining experience. And it is labeled as a learnership or an internship sort of thing. So these are some of the little, little opportunities out there. Aside you not getting the opportunity in school, you can still look out for. It could either be a remote opportunity. The, the world is getting smaller day by day, uh, thanks to COVID and other stuff that happened, right? So you are getting out of school. You've not had the opportunity to do an internship. Don't worry. When you are done, there are still more opportunities out there you can look out for. And one of them is the MasterCard leadership with APSA I just mentioned. Yeah. All right. So I guess she can apply as soon as it's announced so she doesn't get yes. left out. Uh, so she would have to look out for, I think this first batch has ended. Uh, okay. 30th of September. So somewhere in February, I think another advert will go out and then you can just apply All right. For it. You should take advantage of that. Yes. Who else wants to ask a question? Okay. There's a lady in the corner. The gentleman, what's happening? Yeah, not speaking. I only see the smiles. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Can you see her or should she move in a bit? Are we good? Okay, carry on. Okay, so I'm Yabba Chua from KNUST. Okay, so you mentioned um, study and work. So as a student who wish to work and study, how do I go about that? Okay. So you mentioned um, study and work. So as a student who wish to work and then study, how do I go about that or how do I apply? All right, I, I get your question. Um, so in our pilot stage, uh, we floated our advert on our website. All APSA jobs are only advertised on our website. So you go onto an, our APSA website, you go to careers, you go to job opportunities, you would see when the opportunities are available. You might see APSA uh, internship program or APSA work and study program when it goes live, right? And hopefully when it goes live, we'll send out flyers, we'll send out adverts to your various campuses, your various student groups, so that you can see them and also apply to them. And it's a very flexible, I mean, structure, right? So these students, we, we partnered or we premiered this thing with KNUST, your school. So we had about 30 students or more in KNUST who were on campus 
yet they were working on campus and then they need the, the required experience that they needed. So we'll send out the adverts, you see them, and then you can apply. So when we piloted with KNUSC, we made it in such a way that it suited your schedule as a student, right? And so you worked for just two hours yeah. within the day. For some of the students, sometimes they can't even do the two hours. They do like an hour and a half, or they do an hour. And what we do is that we give you branch experience, but at the same time, we also give you front-end experience, like to interact with the customers so that you have a varied experience and you can enrich you know, your CV. So you have sales or customer experience, and then you have administrative experience. So we understand that the schedule can be very tight, and so we make it very flexible. It's maximum of two hours within the day based on your schedule. I don't okay. know if that answers your question. Yeah. All right, you want to touch on it more? So you could clearly see now that this is an employer who really wants to give students the experiential opportunity and not to send people on errands like yeah. we started at the oh, beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So clearly, yeah. It's, it's, it so is. just two hours in a day? Yeah. Richard, you want to touch on this as well? No, I think fine. they've touched on it for you. Okay, any more questions? Gentlemen? Oh, I like this. Okay, there's a gentleman at the front. Can we pass the microphone on to him? There's a gentleman at the front. Okay, please so, stand. Yeah. So my name is Eldad from the University of Professional Studies, Accra. Your name is what, Elda? Eldad. Oh, Eldad, okay. Yes. So um, we live in a country where nothing is promised. Sometimes you can have all these skills and all, but then you keep applying for the jobs, but then you don't get it. So I wanted to know, how do we be able to take in the disappointments if it should happen, even though we have the skills and all that? Yeah. That's, that's interesting. How long should you endure the disappointments, <laughs> even when you have all the required skills? That's, that, that's interesting. Um, I, I, I think it's, it also starts from expectations. Um, sometimes we see roles that are huge up there. You don't have what it takes, and you still want to put in applications. Some people will, and this, I, I was speaking to Presla, probably will have to come back and go into job applications and CVs and so on, because people may prepare a CV, prepare an application, photocopy it, and share the same applications across to several organizations. And that shouldn't even be the case. Sorry, come again? You so, shouldn't share the same CV to every organization. No, 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 no. So the CV must be designed based on the role that is available and the requirement of the role. Yes. So photocopying your CVs and spreading it across, like you're spreading seeds and hoping which one will sprout. Yeah. You know? So back to your question. How do you deal with the uh, rejections and so on? Uh, we all go through that phase. Uh, there are some others, the moment they are done in school, they get opportunities. Some even get opportunities while they are in school, right? They just get picked up and then they are gone. But it, it takes time. I, I need you to project more so they yes, can hear you. It, it, it takes some time and it takes some emotional intelligence. It, makes, it takes you being headstrong. Uh, we always don't get what we want, right? But after a period of time, um, we, we should be able to get used to it. And one thing, you need to also be learning from your mistakes. Okay. So if you keep submitting applications and you're always rejected, you need to take a step backwards and find out what the problem is. Mm. Find out why others are being picked over you. What is it on your application that doesn't stand out? You get it. So these are some of the petty things you can look at if you continuously get rejected. Okay. Prince it's got to do with the preparation stage. Yeah. The preparedness. So how well have you prepared and tailored that CV to that particular role? You don't just see organizations and start distributing CVs. For you know, they don't have vacancy. You need to research whichever organization you are applying to and see what kind of jobs are in those organizations. And whether there is an opening or not, even if there's no opening and you are targeting a particular role, that you can do yourself that favor. Just tailor your CV or your first uh, appearance, which is your, 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 your introduction to that organization. Tailor it to suit something, a role in that organization. You don't, you don't just go for a generalized application and start distributing. No, it doesn't work. So the preparation stage counts very much. The preparation stage. You need to know what you want and tailor whatever preparation you are doing 
towards that. If you see that this role that I want to apply for, I lack I, certain skills that I need to perform that role. You need to go back, learn that skill, and know that you have it before you go applying for that role. But if you generalize it and you start sending applications, that's when the rejections increase and you get disappointed. Mm. Have we helped you so far? Okay. Into it. So another thing to also look out for is when you apply for a role and they send you rejection, it's, it's okay to also send an email or reach out to the recruiter to find out why you were rejected. I, I don't think we do that often. So LinkedIn is a very important tool. If you're not on LinkedIn, please download LinkedIn and take a headshot professional photograph and build your profile on LinkedIn. So if you apply for a job and you don't get it, reach out to the recruiter, search for the recruiter. And if, if you have the email of the recruiter, all the better. But if you don't, search for the recruiter on LinkedIn and send them an email that, my name is Christabel. I applied for this role and I received a rejection. And so I wanted to check why I was rejected and if there is any feedback I can take to improve on myself and look out for other jobs in, in the future. So you can take that rejection and use it to prepare yourself, like Presla said, prepare yourself for your next job. So it shouldn't just end at the rejection. Take the feedback and prepare for the next job. Okay. We have two more questions and then we'll wrap up on this session. Okay, there's a lady there as well. We'll come to you shortly. But yes. My name is Lawson. I'm head of deposit APSA. And just want to touch a bit on what Prisla, Christabel, and Prince are spoken about regarding his question. So I'll share what I did when I was out of school, right? What I did was to look for job opportunities that were available, okay? And when I find that company that I thought there's a job opportunity, I go and fish out information about the role. Who is the higher employer? Okay, is it the head of sales, whoever it is, that is employing for that role? What are the challenges the role faces? What are the issues in there? And then I come back, sit down, and prepare my own solution. Right? After I have my own solution, I come. I see the reception. They call them the gatekeepers, right? The receptionist will tell you, who do you want to see? You mention the person's name. They he's not there. Do you have an appointment? No. All I say is, it's a cold call, right? It's a cold call. And most of the time, they don't know what a cold call is. So then they just find a way of working a way out for you to go and see. So on a number of occasions, I'd gone to a number of places. And um, one of them, I met the head of sales for the role that I wanted. And then I pitched to him. I told him, this is my CV. This is what I want. This is the challenges you have. This is the role you have available. I didn't get that job. but. Two months later, I was called in for it, right? I was called in for it. And guys, it's not just about the job market, okay? When Prisla mentioned that there's also entrepreneurial skills in there, truth of the matter is that there's no way we can create enough job opportunities for all of us, to employ all of us, right? And so whilst you are in school, let's upgrade our skills. If you have entrepreneurial, something small that you are able to do now, hone it, sharpen it, and make it available for everybody else to be able to what? Buy into it. Okay, I would end it and summarize that hack. Okay, hack, as in H-A-C. Always stay hungry, be agile, and be curious. Those three, I don't see where AI can take them out. Thank you. Always stay hungry, be agile, and be curious. Our final question from the other corner. Okay, can we pass on the microphone? She's in the corner. Hello. Yeah, thank you. I'm Isabella from the University of Professional Studies, Accra. So I'm so grateful to Absa for making the ready to work app because it has really helped me a lot. But my question is. Apart from it being theoretical, do you have any practical aspects of it building our skills? The practical, is there any practical aspect of it? Did you get a question? No. Yes. I think you should ask again. We could barely hear you. Yeah, I was saying, apart from it being theoretical, do we have any practical aspect of it? Of the Ready to Work app? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so for the Ready to Work, is the program 
that's what is on the app. After that, we give opportunities for internship, which is the practical aspect that whatever is you learn on the program, you can able you are able to apply it on the job. The practical way we do that is giving the internship opportunities, and also when we go for our engagements, we try to uh, help the students with other skills that we think that they need for uh, at the workplace. I don't know if, friends, you want to add to that. So the Ready to Work uh, program. You need to project yes. a lot more. The Ready to Work program it's, is a requirement in order for you to have an internship with us. So like she said, when you are done with the theoretical aspect of the program, the internship, actual internship is the practical aspect that you get. Yes. All right. Do you want to add anything, Christabel? Uh, so, you know, for us at APSA, we want to prepare the youth for, you know, the job for entrepreneurial um, decisions they want to make in the future. And like Chrysler said, Ready to Work will give you the theoretical aspect of things and then the internship will give you the practical. We also have our graduate training program, which Prince has mentioned. I got through APSA through the management training program, Prince as well. So all of these things we do to prepare you for entry into the job markets. And one of the major entries for the youth into the job market is our management training program. I think Prince hinted on it as well. It's a fantastic program. We already um, sent out the flyers, I think last year, and we are recruiting as we yeah. talk. So please, if you are a student, always look out for our management training program. It's a fantastic way to enter into APSA Bank, and it's, it's phenomenal. You get exposure, you get trainings that will help to propel or accelerate your career. So these are just preparatory you know, um, stages for you to enter into the job market. I hope that answers the question. All right, well, thank you so much to my panelists and to all of you for the questions that you asked. Um, I'm sure that a number of you also asked questions online. Later, APSA would go back and respond to all those questions. So keep them coming. Remember, the hashtag is ready to work. Don't forget that. Well, we have a youth proposition that we will be officially unveiling at this point. We'll take a quick break. And when we get back, we'll head straight into that. Again, thank you all so much. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I land it, I land it. Make I walk you through my everyday life. Busy, busy, busy from the morning light. My to do list long, shadow fit to overlap. So sharp, sharp, turn on mobile app. School fees check, light bills check. Go on with speed like a G4 jet. We be at the day, I am not upset. Check, I don't even use check, city check. Me, I know they run to get a bill, then I tap and bounce. So, hey, no worries in my mind, though. Get a text, new amount in account, too. Cash, no, I land it, I land it, I land it. See my eye gets like I hit the jackpot. Got a quick question for the chat, but where's the nearest ATM spot? New deposit in the cash slot. I be on my modern day new African steeds. Digital man on my Q's and P's. The way it's safe and secure it'll be. Woo, we. Every day, every day life. Oh, every day. Time no day believe me. No long things in my life. Oh, like I'm simple and easy. Every day, every day life. Oh, every day. Time no day believe me. Of my life, no, no. like I'm simple and easy. Easy, easy. Absa, you see how they smile. I did check my alpha. Oh, internet data finished. Then start 895 hash. Make account my account. <laughs> Every day, every day life. Oh. Every Make I walk you through my everyday life. Busy, busy, busy from the morning light. My to-do list long, shadow fit to overlap. So sharp, sharp, turn on mobile app. School fees check, light bills check. Go on with speed like a G4 jet. We be at the day, I am not upset. Check, I don't even use check, city check. Me, I know they run to. Get a bill, then I tap and bounce to. Hey, no worries in my mind, though. Get a text, new amount in account to. Cash, no, I land it, I land it. 
See my eye gets like I hit the jackpot. Got a quick question for the chat but Where's that near the CTM spot? New deep was in the cash slot. I be on my modern day new African steeds. Digital man on my Q's and P's. The way it's safe and secure to be. Woo, wee. Every day, every day life. Oh. Every day. Time no day believe me. No long things in my life. Oh. No like I'm simple and easy. Every day, every day life. Oh. Every day. Time no day believe me. No long things in my life. Oh. No like I'm simple and easy. Absa, you see how they smile. I did check my alpha. Oh, internet data finish. Then start 895 hash. Make account my account. All right, you're welcome back. And yes, we've had the first half of the conversation about apps are ready to work. I hope you have downloaded that app on iOS um, or Google Play Store. Make sure you have it on your phone, especially if you're a young person looking to enter the job market between now and maybe the next four years, five years, whenever it is. We just want to make sure that at APSA you are ready to take up any role that comes your way. You should have those soft skills that we've been talking about here. And if you want to learn more about that, then that's when you should download the Apps Are Ready to Work app. But beyond that, we're also looking at ensuring that the youth are included in um, you know, their fin financial capabilities and making sure they're saving, they're investing the right way. If you get a job, how do you make sure that the money you're earning, you're either investing or saving it so that on a rainy day, you'll have enough to take care of yourself when there's an emergency. And that is why officially today, we are unveiling our revamped youth proposition. You probably might have heard about it in the past. You may have signed on to it. But we're giving every other young person in the country and beyond the opportunity to sign on to this new product. And it will help you become financially stable. It will give you that financial understanding that you require to prepare you for the future. And so it is my utmost pleasure to announce that officially the revamped APSA Ignition account is here again for all young people. And so we're going to count down now. Three, two, one. And here we go with APSA Ignition. Oh, I think you can do better. You can do better. You can do better. Don't you like this? You do, right? Okay, we have more coming. Okay, let ignition begin. Ah, now this is exciting. Congratulations to Absa Ghana and also to all young people out there. Now the person who is responsible for developing a proposition that will attract and retain a youthful customer base for the bank is here. She's always been here with us. She's a youth segment manager at APSA Bank Ghana. She has to tell us all about the Ignition account and why you should sign on as a young person. Please let's welcome again on stage, Christabel Vogbe. Okay, so thank you once again for joining us. My name is Christabel again. So Absa's Ignition product is our promise to you. We made this product with you and we made this product for you. So we have so many benefits that comes with this product, a lot of freebies. We don't charge you on the account, you get free banking services using our digital app, free SMS. There are a lot of benefits that comes with this account. Like I said, we made this product with you and we made it for you. So visit our websites, you can go to the nearest branch and sign up to your Absa Ignition account. Again, we do not leave out the youngest, those of us who are below 18 years, 16 years. We also have the junior save for you. So if you are watching and you can't open the Ignition account because of your age, just worry mommy and daddy, or if you have a sibling, you know, you can worry mommy and daddy to go to any APSA branch, visit the website to also open the APSA junior save. But trust me, the Ignition account and the junior account are our promise to you as a youth. So sign up for it, thank you. All right, thank you. I, I, have, I have one quick question before you go. What makes this different from any other option available out there? 
again, it goes to the introductory statement I made, right? Mm. We made this with the youth and we made it for them. We had a, fo a focus group discussion okay. um, a couple of years back and we listened to them and they gave us feedback of what they look out for when they mm. want to open a financial account for themselves. And so okay. we listened to them. They want the convenience, the youth want the convenience, they want the free things we mentioned earlier. And this makes us set ourselves apart from um, all other products that you find on the market. Then again, for us, we just want to go, we want to go beyond banking. And that's why we have other aspects of our youth proposition, like the ready to work, like um, the intention programs that we offer. So it's not just an account, it's a whole lifestyle. So join the Ignition Lifestyle. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Christabel. And now I'll invite Prince and Priscilla to also join us as well. This is exciting. Do you want to add on to whatever she said to encourage mm -hmm. more young people to sign on? So I always say that, I, think I, have oh, my, yeah. <laughs> I always say that when it comes to banking, when it comes to financial services, we have two generic accounts that all financial institutions sell. But then the additions that comes with the Ignition account is different from these two generic offerings. This savings account and current account offering, the benefits that come with opening an Ignition account is different. It's a hybrid between this. One has cost to it, the other one has limits to it because it's, it's intention, uh, the current account has cost to it, savings has a limit to it as to how you can transact on it. But with Ignition account, you, it's a hybrid. You are in the middle. You have both freedoms. It's le no cost to you. You still have debit cards you can use on it anytime at anywhere. It's, it's basically free and it has rewards. Once you use your card, once you, you use your account, you get rewards with our, our partner agencies that you can really enjoy. It's discounted and it's for all students. If you don't want this, which one do you want? Umpe we ya, ope day. All right, Prince, do you want to say anything yes, before thank we you wrap so up? so much, Priscilla. So I think somewhere in 2018, I presented a similar idea to a panel of executives and uh, they didn't believe the figures I was giving them. I was talking about the youth and how to quickly be transitioning into higher levels. And they didn't believe me. I was six months down the line, I'm watching TV and the, the president of the World uh, Bank was making similar statements. And I was like, I need to go back. These people need to apologize for me because, to me because this is someone else saying this based on research. So I'm glad this, this product is here now, open to all students, customized and tailored for your needs. I'll encourage you all to sign on and join the APSA Wand. Thank you. Thank you so much. And on that note, yes, join the Ignition Lifestyle. It's important. Are you signing on? Do you have one already? Anybody here? What do you think? Are you signing on from this point? You are, right? OK, that's fantastic news. And this is where we wrap up on this very special location. But I just want to remind you that if you want to tweet at us, the, the account is at APSA Ghana. But remember to add the hashtags as well. It's very important. Hashtag ready to work. Hashtag APSA Ignition account. And on Instagram, we would love to get your feedback on what you've learned today. If you're watching us online, we'd love to hear from you as well. Just do a 30-second video. Tell us one or two things that you've learned from today's edition. And remember to add the hashtag ready to work, hashtag APSA Ignition account. And also go ahead and download the APSA Ready to Work app. It's available on iOS, on Play Store, and also on Huawei devices as well. So on that note, we're all going to open an AppSight Ignition account now. We're all going to join or download the Ready to Work app, and we're going to make sure we're ready for the job market. Thank you so much to my special guests this morning as well. Let me get their names right. Uh, give me a minute. Okay. okay, so I have Prince Tetenate. Uh, he's the acting head of talent acquisition and a people business partner at APSA Bank Ghana. He's a certified senior professional in HR and he's passionate about supporting young people. Then Christopher Vogbe, the youth segment manager at APSA Bank Ghana, responsible for developing a proposition that will attract, retain uh, a youthful customer base for the bank. She's also very passionate about youth financial inclusion. And Priscilla Yebua, very passionate about youth development. She's the head of citizenship at APSA Bank Ghana, in charge of the bank's corporate social responsibility. And on that note, I'll say see you at the APSA Youth Forum next month on the 20th.
on the 27th and the 28th. And see you at APSA, you know, getting your Ignition account. And see you online as well. Wherever it is, APSA will find you. So please, join the family. My name is Bailo Mundi, and it's been a pleasure. See you again another time. Bye. Every day, every day life. Oh. Every Everyday, everyday life. Oh. Make I walk you through my everyday life. Busy, busy, busy from the morning light. My to-do list long, shadow fit to overlap. So shop, shop, turn on mobile app. School fees check, light bills check. Do I'm with speed like a G4 jet? We be at the D, I am not upset. Check, I don't even use checks to the check. Me, I know they run to get a bill, then I tap and bounce to. Hey, no worries in my mind though. Get a text, new amount in account to. Cash, cash, no, I land it, I land it, I land it. See my eye gets like I hit the jackpot Got a quick question for the chat But where's the nearest ATM spot? New deepers in the cash slot I be on my modern day new African steeds Digital man on my Q's and P's The way it's safe and security to be Ooh, wee. Every day, every day life oh, Time no day believe me No long things in my life oh, Like I'm simple and easy Every day, every day life oh, Time no day believe me Things in my life, no, no, no. like I'm simple and easy. Easy, easy. Absa, you see how they smile? How they check my alpha? Oh, internet data finish. Then start 895 hash. Make account my account.